Hi guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be doing the ultimate high-end makeup starter kit. So basically what this video is, if you are looking into dabbling into the high-end makeup lines, these are the products that are the best of the best, the ones that I recommend for starters to begin with. So if you are interested in seeing my picks for these products, then just keep watching. So about a month ago, I did my ultimate luxury makeup starter kit that was a collab with my girl Tara. It was really fun, but I also wanted to do the different ranges in makeup as well because not everybody is looking for luxury. So I'm doing just high-end right now, so not drugstore products and not luxury products, just those mid-range types of brands that you can pick up at Sephora. Of course, you can pick luxury up as well, but like 99% of the stuff you can pick up at Sephora, which I think this video is perfect timing because of the Sephora VIB sale that's coming up. So I've already done my recommendations for that. But these are also just kind of tried and true products that I would also recommend. Just things that aren't new that I didn't talk about in my recommendations videos. But of course, I love all of these products and I also highly recommend them for the sale if you are interested in getting started into these high-end makeup lines. I will do an affordable and drugstore version as well, but I did want to do high-end just because of timing. I will link down below my luxury recommendations if you are interested in that but let's get into high end this was a no-brainer for me the smashbox photo finish primerizer i actually have two but this is the one that i've been using most because i haven't been drinking enough water i'm gonna be honest with myself so my skin has been feeling a little bit more dry so i really like this because it's very lightweight and it's extremely moisturizing it's like a liquidy consistency but if you have dry skin you need this primer this makes the most perfect smooth base underneath makeup so whatever you're going to put on top this kind of just nourishes your skin so that makeup will sit pretty on it so I highly 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 recommend this but I also kind of will go in and out of phases and one or the other with the Too Faced Hangover Replenishing Face Primer. I wouldn't say I love one more than the other. The difference is how they sit on the skin so both are equally as moisturizing. This one is just more liquidy so it makes your skin a little bit more slick whereas this one has a little bit more of a stick to it. So I find that maybe makeup will stick onto it a little bit better if you're using a liquidy foundation or foundation that moves around. You might want this, but honestly, both work great. They're equally as wonderful, and I couldn't pick one over the other because they're both awesome, and both of them I'm like running out of. So that should tell you something because I never run out of anything. Foundations, I also have two. So the first one, this one is definitely a tried and true foundation for me. I will always have it in my collection. It is a repurchase, meaning this is not my first bottle. This is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD foundation. This is just the best of every category of foundation that you would need. I think it works great for every different skin type. It's just the middle of everything. It is not a dewy foundation, but it's not a matte foundation. It's not full coverage, but it's not light coverage. It's in the middle, medium, and it's just a solid foundation. It lasts a long time. It looks really good, and it just is an easy foundation to go to that's reliable. So I have to recommend this foundation. It is a wonderful foundation that's never going to let you down. It's kind of boring, you know, it's not a new release. It's a really, really old foundation, but it has stayed in my collection for such a long time because it's a really good foundation. It's the foundation I'm wearing now, just overall very well-rounded. If you want something with some more coverage that's more dewy, the ABH Luminous Foundation, I really, really have been enjoying quite a lot. This one is kind of the tried and true, if you will, but to kind of mix it up and add a newer product in case you were looking for something that was a bit more new. I really enjoy this foundation. Some people don't, but if you like a really dewy foundation and it does have really good coverage, I definitely recommend it. I personally have had nothing but good experiences with it. So when I want something dewy that's also going to cover, this is a foundation that I go for. Concealer. I only have one because in my opinion, this is like one of the best concealers. This is the Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer. I use mine in the shade light beige and you guys this concealer is amazing It's actually been a while since I've used it because I've been trying out comparing a lot of newer concealers And I grabbed this baby out for this video today and uh, I forgot how good it is It is like tart shape tape in my opinion, but actually moisturizing underneath the eyes I find tart shape tape to be extremely drying and cracky and just emphasizing texture and all of the stuff I don't want to be emphasized because it's so dry. This is perfect 
perfect. It has a lot of coverage and it never ever ever looks cakey under the eyes. I find it to be very very smoothing. This is just all around a great concealer. I forgot how good it was. It's been so long since I've used it but 110% recommend this concealer. It's definitely one of my top fives in my entire collection. Probably top three honestly. Top my favorite high-end setting powder is the Huda Beauty Easy Bake Loose Setting Powder. I have mine in the shade Pound Cake. Now if you don't like scented items or fragranced items this one does have a slight fragrance to it but honestly I just love the powder for this. I find it to be very blurring on my skin. I love it mostly to set my under eyes. I think it does a really nice job of just sinking into the concealer and just mixing very well with concealers and setting it and having the concealer not move. It just smooths the under area and makes your under eyes look perfected and then if you just lightly dust the rest of your face it does its job. When I was looking into my collection there wasn't really a lot of high-end powders that I was in love with. I mostly love Luxury and then my Maybelline Fit Me powder. The formulation of this reminds me a lot of the Fit Me powder because it's a little bit more of a dense powder so it fills in all of the lines on your face. So if you like the Maybelline Fit Me, you might also like this one as well. It's just so blurring and soft and just makes your skin look really good. So highly, highly, highly recommend this one. Going into bronzer products, I have two cream contours that I enjoy. Cream contours are one of my favorite steps in my makeup routine because there really is nothing more natural to sculpt your face than a cream bronzer cut type of product. But I have two and the reason is because I couldn't pick one over the other. There are equally as good. So the first one is from Milk Makeup and this is the Baked Bronzer Stick. This is so good. So this one is a stick form. It's a little bit more matte than the one I'm going to mention. This is just like the perfect neutral toned color. It's not too warm and it's not too cool. It's right in the middle. It just acts as a shade there that both sculpts and warms up your face and it blends really beautifully. Back in the day I used to be very skeptical about these types of sticks but this one is absolutely amazing and it spreads with ease. I also love Love the Huda Beauty Tan Tour Contour and Bronzer Cream. I have mine in the shade Fair. This is also another incredible product. The way I apply this is with my Beauty Blender. I just pat this in and put it all over my face. With the Milk Makeup one, I also will take my Beauty Blender and just rub it off the top. But there's something a little bit easy, I feel like, about just opening this and popping it in. Both of them are equally as good. I can't really tell you which one to choose over the other. The one thing that Huda Beauty has over the Milk is the Milk only has two shades of the bronzer stick and Huda Beauty has at least five, I believe. So one or the other is great, but Huda Beauty has more shades. So I love both, truly. I do also have have one powder bronzer to talk about with you guys and this was in my most recent monthly favorites because I kind of rediscovered it and it's just so good it's one of my favorite high-end bronzers and this is the Too Faced Sweethearts bronzer in the shade Sweet Tea it has a little bit of a sheen to it I used it today to set my Huda Beauty tan tour and it's just the perfect shade it blends into the skin so beautifully it is so natural because of that very light natural sheen and it's the perfect kind of neutral bronzy color leaning a little bit more warm i would say but that's perfect because it is a bronzer super cute packaging and i think what's great about this for beginners is it's kind of foolproof to apply you don't apply too much and it blends very easily so love this bronzer very very much moving on to blushes i have two different lines or formulas to speak about so the first First one is Jouer. Any Jouer blush is incredible. This is a six pan palette that they no longer sell unfortunately but this does contain shades that are in their regular line. They do have blush duos and I recommend you pick those up if you can. I think one of my favorite most universal shades is Adore Me which you can purchase individually. Jouer has one of the best blush formulas in the game especially in the high end range. They're probably my favorite because they're so easy to blend out if you over apply. They have one of the most beautiful range of shades in my opinion and they just have the best colors that are so flattering and very easy to apply. Definitely foolproof for a beginner so if you are looking in what direction to go as far as blushes I would point you towards Jouer. They have just the best line ever and the best colors. I did also want to talk about Max line as well. I specifically love the shade Melba. It's kind of my everyday go with every eye look kind of blush. MAC also has a really beautiful formula and they have an even better range 
Rage than Jouer because they have a billion N1 blushes, which kind of can make it harder because at least Jouer's is a little bit more of a condensed line, so it's easier to choose. MAC is kind of all over the place, but MAC blushes have been around and very popular for a very long time for a very good reason. They have a lot of different textures, different finishes, and every single blush from MAC I've used is incredible. They do not have a bad blush in their line, so I definitely recommend that you do look into MAC's blushes. My personal favorite if you're looking for a color recommendation has to be Melba. You know, it's warm and cool at the same time. It goes with every look. It's a very, very universal blush on a lot of different skin tones. So highly recommend this. For highlighters, my go-to high-end highlighter has been the Milk Makeup Flex Highlighter. I have mine in the shade Lit. They have one of the most beautiful highlighting formulas I have dealt with. This is the highlighter that I am wearing right now. One of the things that I look for in highlighters is how they blend into the skin or if it looks like it is sitting on the skin. So sometimes with highlighters, you can kind of see that line of where you applied the highlighter and sometimes you can't really get it to buff into the skin so that glow looks like it is in your skin and not sitting on your skin. This highlighter is the perfect example of melting into the skin. Beautifully buffs into the skin. You can't see any lines over here and it's just the most beaming highlight as well. I love a more natural highlight typically, but if the highlight is beaming but it can still blend into the skin, I'm all for it. That is still a good highlight for me. And this is just the most smoothing formulation as well. It doesn't emphasize texture. It's actually incredible how it can be so beaming and not emphasize texture. Normally, I wouldn't suggest to purchase individual highlights because that can be quite expensive, but this is one that is definitely worth every single penny. I love their highlighter formulas. I don't know how they created such a silky smooth formula, but they really, really nailed it. Also, you can't go wrong with classic Becca highlighters as well. Becca is really known for their highlights and for good reason. They're a lot different than the Milk formulation. They're a little bit more creamy, whereas the Milk is more silky. Becca's are easy to work into the skin as well, and they have very good colors. My two favorites are Opal. Opal is great, especially for medium skin tones, or if you're not into a super bright white stark highlighter, if you have light skin, this is also the way to go. Be careful with Opal because it can leave a cast on lighter skin tones, but this is a really good just kind of turn and see the light, and then turn, and then you don't see it anymore. So Opal is a really, really good one. Becca has a great formulation. If you're looking for something a little bit more blinding, Champagne Pop is the way to go. Do you remember Jaclyn Hill's collaboration? I've even hit pan on this. This is a really good highlight. If you want something more blinding, let me show you. Put a little bit on so you can kind of see. And this one's a little bit more golden compared to the Lit from Milk. Oof, I love this highlighter as well. So both formulations are really incredible. You can't go wrong with either, just depending on what you're feeling. But I feel like everybody kind of recommends Becca highlighters. Those are no surprise. So I did want to shed some light on that Milk as well because Milk also has an incredible highlighting formula. Let's talk about eyebrows really quick. There's two eyebrow pencils that I highly recommend and that everybody recommends, so I'm just gonna quickly breeze through it. Today I use the Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil. I use the shade four. This is a really great classic brow pencil just to kind of fill in the eyebrows in the areas that you need. It has a really fine tip so that you can draw hair like strokes. Also the ABH brow pencil is very good. I can't really tell the difference between the two. This is just the one I happen to have in my collection today. But definitely go ABH or Benefit when it comes to any brow products. I always recommend the Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil though because it's very, very precise. All right, time to move on to eyes. Let's talk about my favorite eye base of the moment. This is the MAC Painterly Paint Pot. This has been around forever. This is no surprise. I just like it because of how simple it is to use. I wouldn't say it guarantees that your shadows aren't going to crease because it doesn't. I still do get creasing, but I love the way shadows lay on this. I love the way that this blinks out the veins on my lid. So for me, it's worth it. I'll take an Esam W25 brush, which is this really big sable hair brush, and this is just what I use to quickly paint all over my eyelid. And my eyelid is even, and it's ready for shadows to be applied. So this, in my opinion, is the best prep for eyeshadow. It just leaves the most beautiful canvas for eyeshadows. So now it's time to talk about 
eyeshadows. This is very predictable, but I do recommend ABH shadows to start off for first-time high-end users. There are so many beautiful eyeshadows out there in the world, of course, especially high-end. But I do really recommend ABH, not only because their formula is great, but because it is so known. You know, everybody knows about ABH palettes, and it does feel nice to be a part of understanding that. Um, my number one recommendations, especially for beginners, is the Soft Glam. This is very predictable. I've talked about this recently recently in videos about how good it is and how it needs to be a staple in a collection. This has every kind of neutral color that you're going to need. You can lean more cool, you can lean more warm. The formulation on this is really easy. You have beautiful shimmer, you have blendable mattes, you can't go wrong with this palette. So this is the number one palette that I recommend. Maybe this isn't your cup of tea. Any palette that you get from ABH is great. Sultry is my personal favorite of the moment. If you like more cool toned shadows, if you really, really, really are looking for colors for a warm eye, Modern Renaissance is the way to go. Modern Renaissance made warm tones happen in the first place and this was a very unique palette of the time and it's really good. I really enjoy it. And then the other one that I highly recommend is the Jackie Ina palette if you're looking for a little bit more room for creativity. This is the one that I wore today because I've been wearing soft glam too much so I had to give my Jackie Ina some love. So I did create a little bit more of a crazy look with this palette. But I really do recommend any ABH palette, whatever kind of strikes your fancy. The Am Rising one is a really great one to start off with as well. Carly Bible, if you like there's more light kind of lavendery cool tones. Any of the palettes are great but of course my number one recommendation is soft glam just to start you off. High-end makeup brands also have some really great lid toppers. I always talk about the Stila Magnificent Metals Glitter and Glow. So my favorite shades are Diamond Dust, which is the color in my hand, Kitten, which is a glittery champagne, and Rose Gold Retro, which is a rose gold base with some silver flecks in there. These make glitter so easy to deal with. So right now I only have Diamond Dust because the other two are actually in my makeup kit because I use them for brides or whoever wants some glitter, but I do have Disco Dusk kind of right in the middle of the eye and in my inner corner, and I just added that extra pop to the look. These colors don't have fallout. They're so glittery and they just ease of application. I mean all of it. It just makes everything foolproof. So if you're looking for that one key glitter item or that one liquid shadow, Stila is definitely the brand that you have to look for. Their stuff is gorgeous. Now don't go overboard like I did and buy like 20 and then never use them because they do dry out within a year I would say. But if you can pick up one or two colors that you use throughout the year, you won't regret it. These are phenomenal ever since I've used them. I've been in love with them. But if you're looking for something that's a little bit more of a powder lid topper to kind of finish it off and really add a glittery look, I also love the Touch and Soul Sparkling Foiled Pigments. I stopped talking about these because I've been <laughs> diving into other things, but this one is also so good. My favorite color, in case you were wondering, is Cream Peach. This is kind of that champagne color that goes with everything. So they're going to kind of look like this. And they are as cream crazy as they look on the finger. They are that metallic and reflective and it's a different look than the Stila. The Stila is a liquid shadow. This guy is just a really really reflective powder shadow that you're not going to get in a regular kind of powder eyeshadow scenario because they need to be packed individually so that they don't dry out. These are just the perfect kind of pop to the center of the lid shades. I have almost the whole line but Cream Peach is my favorite. Sun Aurora. It's a really cool kind of green gold. And then Persian Rose if you like more pinky tones. But these are also incredible. Highly, highly, highly recommend. Especially if you want to pick them up during the sale because they're kind of expensive to buy those individual things. So my all-time favorite eyeliner from High End. This is the one that I use in my makeup kit. It's the only gel liner that I will use. This is the MAC Black Track Fluid Line. This has been a classic for me for years. It's the only kind of gel pot liner that I find doesn't transfer on me. It legitimately lasts a really long time. It's one of the best that I've personally tried. I prefer gel liners. Like I use a lot of liquid eyeliners and pen eyeliners as well but when it comes down to it I really do feel like I get the best line and the best wing and have the most control when I'm using a gel liner and a very very thin brush. The MAC 210 is what I use. I always get my best wings 
when I use these two together. So this is just the best pretty basic gel liner in my opinion. My favorite cream eyeliners are from the Sephora brand actually and these are the colorful shadow and liners. Right now I just have a white, a nude, and a blue jean kind of blue color in my collection. I'm wearing the nude in my waterline right now. I find that these last a very long time. You can use these as eyeshadows. I'll use them as eyeshadow bases. The white especially under pastel shades or you could use a black they're just so creamy and so easy to blend out. You can't use them as like top liner, but you can use them as either an eyeshadow base or waterline mascara. Secret Bordeaux is what I'm wearing right now. It's a nude and it's just so creamy. It just glides onto the waterline and staying time is just really, really good as well. You know, it's not perfect. It's not the most long lasting, but for being so creamy, it's just so amazing. I love these guys so much. So let's talk about lashes. The one pair of lashes that I have to recommend to you from Lily Lashes are the Style Con. These are the ones that I'm wearing right now. They have a nice curl to them. They also have some spaces in between so that you can see the eyeshadow underneath. They're not too long or obnoxious. Just the Miami lashes I find to really overpower my eyes. Con is the perfect amount of drama while still not overpowering and weighing down my eyes. So if you have smaller eyes, I recommend Con. They're just really nice. They have a nice curl. They look unnatural, but they look as natural as unnatural could be. So Lily Lashes and Con is one of my go-to lashes. They're the ones that I'm wearing right now. My number one favorite lip liner brand is MAC. They have the most perfect formulation where it's not too creamy so that you don't have control, but it's not too waxy so that you're dragging on the skin. It's just right in between. The MAC lip liners are what I use in my makeup kit because I find if I use something too creamy on a client it's quicker to bleed and it also is harder to apply if it's more creamy I feel like I can get true precision with the formulation of the MAC lip liners and they also have of course a great color range as well my favorite everyday lip liner shades are Whirl and Spice those are my two favorite and of course those are the ones that I keep in my makeup kit so I don't have them here with me right now but Whirl is like that perfect mauve rose color and then Spice is like Whirl but more warm and then Cork is what I'm wearing today. It's just that basic brown lip liner shade as well. And they are creamy enough to where you can blend them before they set down as well. So that's very important to know. Whirl, Spice, and Cork are your go-to colors. And then for lipsticks, I have a whole line. I love the Becca lipsticks. They have the best. So the one that I'm wearing today and is probably my most used is the shade Sugar. This is just the perfect nude color that goes with everything. I've recommended Sugar for a very long time because it's very good, but they have some really great nudes in here. We have Dune, which is a little bit more peachy. Cupid Kess has a little bit more deepness into it, a little bit more red. This is from the Chloe Malika collection, Hot Tamale. An incredible red-orange shade. Just so many good colors. Dusk, it's so good. Tawny is a very nude chocolate brown shade. It's really stunning. So I love the Becca lipsticks. That's my number one favorite high-end lipstick formula. Something about them is so creamy. They all have a little bit of a shine to them. She has the best color selection as well. And overall, they just feel very, very expensive. The formulation is very comparable and up to par with Charlotte Tilbury. So, And then finally, the Fenty lip glosses are also the best in the game. They have the best big fat applicator the best range of colors and the most glossy shiny not sticky finish at all any color you get you can't go wrong with all of mine are in my purses so the only one I have right now is fussy the universal shade is really great it's a bit more rosy than this shade right here fussy is the perfect pink and she just has so many different colors these are the best glosses I'm sure you guys have heard about them enough because they're just everything about them is so good just so comfortable, so shiny, so juicy. Love it. So that is all I have for my high-end makeup starter kit. I definitely know it's a mouthful, lots of products, but there are so many good things that I wanted to talk about. I didn't want to miss anything. I just think that these are really great for you to consider picking up for this Fora VIB sale as well. These are just my staples, things that I don't get to talk about all the time. So let me know your thoughts down below. Are any of these products of interest to you? Do you think I did justice as far as the ultimate high-end makeup starter kit. That is all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I seriously hope you take the time to do so. We have a lot of fun videos. I post 
every day of the week except for Sunday. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. Have a good one.